Today, I'll talk about my inspiration piece, this piece that I never finished, and how it got to here. Okay, let's get started. Hello and welcome. If you love abstract art and the creative process, you're in the right place. I'll talk through my steps and throw in some stories about being an artist and running an art business. My name is Betty Franks and I'm super happy you're here with me today. Okay, so we are working on paper today. This is a piece that has been laying around my studio for far too long. It's clearly one that I started, didn't finish because I just was stuck and wasn't sure what to do with it. And so I decided to do something with it today. And here I'm showing you how I'm a double dipper. I'm putting out some colors. These are Nova Color paints. If you are interested in learning more about Nova Color acrylic paints, I'm gonna leave a link down below, or just leave me a comment and just leave the word Nova Color, and I will be happy to send you a link to Betty's Bundle, which is a partnership I did with Nova Color Paints where they've got 15 of my go-to colors that are all in one bundle, so super easy to purchase. There's a lot of colors on their website, and I've had so many people not know what to start with, what colors to pick. And so I put together Betty's Bundle in response to that so that it makes it easy for you. All right, here I am coming in with my mark making and this particular mark making that I'm doing is gonna be crucial in the steps of creating this piece. I'm gonna talk more about that in just a moment. This piece is 14 inches by 11 inches. And like I mentioned, it's on paper and I believe this is Bristol paper or mixed medium. Those are my two favorite go-to papers. Now I will leave a link down below for you as well to my favorite art supplies so that you can check out what I like to use. I'm coming in here and I'm getting started with my what I like to call my cool colors. So I just put out the blue and the purple, the black and yellow and white. And so I'm gonna kind of do a limited palette for this particular painting. But before I get into that, let me talk about the inspiration. So this is Croatia and the piece is inspired by my last trip to Croatia, which was in March. And this is kind of the scenery we got going on do you see the kitty cat in that one? This, this is what I see going for walks in the month of March. So not too many flowers in bloom, but I was very intrigued and inspired by all of the dry sticks and, and bushes and uh, some of the greenery there. And definitely here you can see all the little yellow flowers popping up, but there's lots of stones on the island. And this particular picture here, I love this. I love seeing those bunch of dry twigs and that that last scene there is a view of a sunset from the mainland looking out uh, towards the west. Okay so the like I said the lines are really important in this painting and you can see here I'm being a bit more intentional. I am trying to pull out these shapes in between these lines that I just put down and typically when I put down lines, and I'll, I'll do air quotes here, my scribbles, it's to loosen up and connect with my, with my piece of art that I'm creating on, whether it's canvas or paper or wood. But for this particular process, all of these so-called scribble lines are important because I'm going to be trying to preserve some of them, which mimics or reminds me of that last, second to last picture that I showed you, where there's just this whole bundle of of twigs intertwined and I really loved that and was really drawn to that. And so that's what I'm trying to do here is I'm kind of trying to recreate that that look, that feeling, that um, oh I don't know what else to call it, but that love for for what I was seeing. Now I'm doing this recording and this voiceover recording in June 15th, 2023. I created this piece in, I believe it was April when I came back because I was there for the month of March, visiting my parents, helping them out. And when I came back, I was working on my, on pieces for my solo show, which opened on May 5th, excuse me, May 6th. 
and it's still going until July 8th, 2023. But I was working on a lot of large pieces, so I felt this need to just sit down and do something smaller. And that's why I grabbed this piece and started working on it. So this is a little bit different than I would normally, the way I would normally create. And it really challenged me to do something that was a little bit outside my comfort zone. You know, certainly there are some marks in here that are very much like the way that I normally create, but there's a lot here in terms of the process that is new to me and really challenged me and pushed me to, to try something different. Now, if you are new to my channel, welcome. Super happy to have you here. I would love it if you could subscribe, hit that bell so that you're notified of future videos. And then also give me a thumbs up. That really means a lot to me. It means a lot to other folks too, because the more you engage with my videos, the more chances that YouTube will serve it up so that other artists such as yourself will see it and, and hopefully enjoy my videos as much as you're enjoying them. Now, if you've been following me for a while, welcome back. Super happy to have you here. There are many folks who have been following me for years, and it just makes my heart so happy every time I hear from you. You leave comments. I start recognizing names on a regular basis, and I love that. I love answering your questions. I was recently on doing an interview, and I was telling the person that was interviewing me that I'm really an open book. If you've got a question about art, art making, art business. If I know the answer, I am more than happy to share it with you. I know it is such a struggle when you are just learning and figuring things out. And if I can help make that a little bit smoother or easier for you, I'm happy to do that. So feel free to leave a comment or leave a message down below. All right, I'm moving right through this piece. And you can see some of those lines that I am leaving that again, representing that love for that, that kind of tangle of, of weeds and, and old dried up sticks and such. Now there's a little bit of representational flowers here too that I threw in like that light blue one I just did over on the right side and that yellow one that's down in the lower left corner. Just doing something a little fun. I do love to doodle, and I spend a lot of my evenings uh, when I'm in front of the TV doodling flowers, and they tend to be not loose like this. I tend to do very exact, precise doodling of flowers. I should share that with you guys one of these days. Actually, I'll just throw in a picture right here for you now, and I just love doing that, and sometimes I, some of that will sneak into my artwork. Okay, I grabbed a rigger, which is a brush that has really long bristles on it. I love using a rigger, a rigger, whether that is for a small piece like this or even my super large ones, like 60 by 60 inches. I just love the way that it leaves marks. And now here I'm using the side of the rigger to just fill in. If you are interested, did I already mention this? If you're interested in my uh, favorite art supplies, just um, look down below in the description or leave me a message just saying you want a list of my favorite art supplies and I'm happy to share that with you. All right, so back to Nova Color. If you would like to learn more about my choice of paints, my go-to color uh, colors that I love. Like I said before, I can leave a description for you. Um, I can leave a link in the description for you, but you can also leave the word Nova Color and I'll know that you want to get more information about that and I'll send you the link. I'm trying to make it easy for you so you don't have to leave me a long message asking for something. So here I'm slowing down a little bit and that's because this is so new to me, not, not entirely new, just some of this process is new for me. So I'm not sure like what to do, where to go. 
it's just so chaotic at first that I have to try to to see through all of that and and make my way through it so that I can quiet down areas but yet keep some some of, of the original um, marks that I made uh, showing through. Looks like I'm looking for one other color to add. There we go, Conacridone Red. I love this color. Now, this color looks really great. It's a transparent color or a translucent color. Now, I'm not sure, one of the two. But if you add some white to it, it it's perfect for making a beautiful pink color. But in this case, I'm kind of making more of a mauve color because I didn't want it to be like, you know, bright and in your face because in this palette, I'm working with limited colors and I'm working with muted colors. This is certainly not my usual palette. And I was kind of pushing myself to try something different and something that I wouldn't normally do. I like those darker values that I just put in. I've got some lighter values. That whole upper area has got the lighter values. I was pointing to the bottom section because I'm not happy with the way that's looking. So I got to figure out what I can do there to change that up a bit. And then that turn, it turns out that I don't leave that there either. I, I go over it again. So there was a quick, I should have slowed that down for you, but that was a quick review of where I was at so far. Now you can slow this down. There's an, a gear icon, it's a circle underneath the video and you've got some options there to slow down the video. And also I believe you can change it to, you could turn on subtitles and change it to your language of preference. So for example, if you're in Spain, you should see the option to have it in Spanish. Now, please leave me a comment below and tell me if that works because People ask me if they can have it translated in their language, and I tell them about that, but I never hear back whether or not it worked. So let me know in the comment below if that works. Now, as I'm working through this piece, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the pieces that I created when I was in Croatia in March of this year. All right, so here we go. So here's one of them. Love these colors. A, a bit brighter, jewel-toned. Love this one, too. Those orange colors. Delicious. This is more neutral, um, going with those blues and greens, another neutral one. I love the splatters on it. And this one's got a lot of splatters too. And I love this one. So that's a sampling of the ones that I did when I was in Croatia. And I would like to create some more like this. I have not done any more since, since this piece that I'm creating here. And since I'm leaving and heading back to Croatia in a few days, <laughs> Maybe I will just uh, continue doing that when I get there. We'll see. I'm always inspired when I'm there. And it's summertime since it's June there. The weather there is very similar to the weather here in California. So it's going to be, you know, in the 80s when I get there. Not as many flowers in bloom. There, You would think there would be, but they don't get a whole lot of rain. So they dry, the flowers dry out very quickly. Now that blue kind of leaf shape that's next to my yellow flower, that was competing with the blue that I had over on the right hand side. Do you remember the, the blue that I had on the right? And then I came in with that dark green and then a kind of a creamy color below it so that I could take it out. It was competing with this other blue leaf shape. And I didn't want to have it do that. So I took that out just by cutting it in half and doing it in two different colors. Now here I've got white that is pretty much straight out of the jar. Maybe whatever I had on my brush is adding just a, a little bit of color to it. And coming in with a light value again, this one's got some pink in it. And again, even though I'm layering up, I'm still trying to keep some of those lines that I had 
from my initial mark making that I did when I sat down and started this piece. I love using a rigger. I use it in a variety of different ways. You know, I can paint with it or I can make little marks with it. I've got an online course that I launched in January of this year that has been wildly successful in terms of folks signing up for it and the reviews that I've been getting for it have been just wonderful. The one thing that really has stood out the most is that folks love that I talk through my process. It's not sped up like the video is here. We're doing it in real time and I talk you through why I put down the marks I do, why I put down the colors I do in real time, you know, what's going through my head at that time. All right, so this is not done. I'm just showing you a quick view. And here it is with a little bit of white paper behind it so that we can take out all the noise. My palette is, is a bit crazy there. All right, we're gonna come back to this in just a moment and here we go. So we're back. The lighting is a little bit cooler now. It's interesting because I, I have the same lighting on, but I think sometimes it even depends on what I'm wearing and it reflects off of what I'm doing. So I've got a whole lot of white on my palette and I'm putting out some blue. All right, so that darker blue just, it wasn't working. I had this sitting around for a little bit and I was observing it taking peeks at it, trying to figure out what, what it is about it that was bothering me that needed fixing. So that bottom area, it was just way too much white going all the way across. So I'm gonna chop that up a bit. And adding kind of a green gray-ish color there. So I added a multiple, multiple different colors in that lower area because before it was just all white going across. So I chopped it up. And here I'm going to be hesitating quite a bit because I know that I'm kind of coming towards the end, but I'm not sure yet exactly how I want to finish this piece. And I stepped away for some reason. I don't know where I went. Oh, I went to go get some clean water. That was it. My water was getting a little too dirty. I really enjoyed creating these pieces just because they were a bit different than what I normally do, but yet not so different that, you know, that that it was not overly difficult. I'm trying to think of the words I'm trying to say, and I'm watching myself at the same time. And sometimes I have a hard time talking and looking at what I'm doing. So I apologize if I'm hesitating there as I'm trying to talk with you. As I was saying, it was fun and challenging trying to do this. You know, the challenge being trying to keep some of those lines still in that final piece and not covering them all up and creating different kinds of shapes than I would normally create. But yet some of those shapes are very much recognizable. I think it's still got the Betty look to it. <laughs> all right, so I think I'm calling it done. Let's see, nope. Not quite. I come back. Oh, here we go. So these are the splatters that I added at the end. Lately, I've been experimenting with doing more splatters at the very end, before my final mark making, I should say. Now, in this piece, I didn't get an opportunity to do the final mark making because I took this piece to Santa Fe with me to show students in my workshop. And when I brought it back, I completely forgot to turn my camera on to do my final mark making. So it wasn't done when I took it to Santa Fe with me. I seem to be searching for something. Oh, my hair dryer so that I can 
or my heating tool, also in my favorite art supplies if you're interested in that. I love this one because it's not noisy. And so when I am doing a live, um, a, um, a live art session or if I'm recording something live real time, you can barely hear it. Okay, so just about done there. And then I will show you um, the last photo of what it looks like at the very end. And I did very little mark making on it uh, because it already had so much going on that the final mark making was, was very limited and very subtle. And you'll see when I show you the photo that there isn't a huge difference between the two. There it is. So that's the final piece and um, love it. My cousin Joy purchased it and super happy that she has it in her home. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Check out some more videos here. Subscribe, hit the thumbs up and hit the bell and I will see you soon. Wishing you a super fabulous and creative day.